Medon juice, Medon juice. Everybody wants to drink some Medon juice. Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to another amazing, wonderful Weeaboo Wednesday. Oh, these? Well, these are my bear ears. Or, if you're Japanese and you want to speak a bit of Nihongo, they're Kuma ears. No, um, I got these when I went to Japan for the first time. Uh, they had these and I think bunny ears to choose from for like a set meal that I got. I don't know why, uh, but I got the bear ears because they seemed a little bit more masculine. And I said to the maid, Kuma Kuma. And she said, Kuma Kuma. And I said, Gao Gao. And she said, Go Go. And I said, Moe Moe Kyun. And she said, Ah, oh, Moe Moe Kyun. Ha -ha. And she was like so amazed that I did that. Then we did the fusion pose. But in all seriousness, welcome everybody to Weeaboo Wednesday, which is where I steal anime news from a bunch of different websites and put them into this one video. And today, as much as I didn't think it, we have some crazy stuff to talk about. So let's get on it. The first thing I wanna talk about is Gundam related. And you know Gundam news always requires a hat change. But I'm also wearing a Gundam shirt, and this is actually relevant to the story. If you're not familiar with the brand Uniqlo, I've talked about them a few times. They have had a lot of anime and manga tie-ins, a lot of brand tie-ins actually, that are pretty interesting to Weeaboo. And if you so happen to be inclined to get some cool clothes from Uniqlo that is anime related, which is usually pretty high quality stuff, these shirts are really comfortable and they're only like 15 bucks a pop. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about on April 10th, they're releasing some new Gundam shirts for the 40th anniversary of Gundam. And in such, if you happen to buy three of these shirts, you will get a free Gunpla kit. That's right, a free exclusive Gunpla kit of either RX-78 or Red Zaku as well. Well, I guess technically Red, yeah. So the other one's Zaku, Zaku 2, I guess. Basically, the antagonist and the protagonist from the original Mobile Suit Gundam, but they are themed Uniqlo colors. They've done this before, actually, when they released this set of shirts. I didn't happen to know about it or get them at the time, so I'm gonna try to do it this time. If you get three shirts, you get a free Gunpla kit, but I don't think you get to choose. There will be limited supplies, so April 10th, make sure to suck up all the shirts you can so you get those free kits. I'm hoping to get them both. And with that out of the way, I need glasses. Oh hell yeah, now we can see! <laughs> Kaiju Sekai Seifuku, also known as Monster World Conquest, and it is a series that is adapted from a cute four coma manga. It's actually being released as a miniature like anime, basically, with these little web shorts online through the Kotobukiya YouTube channel. Yeah, the same Kotobukiya who makes amazing model kits and figures, of which I have several and will likely be getting more of. And it's a cute little series known as Heartwarming Slice of Life. It's about these four little cute dragons that have come to Earth to dominate it, but they're going to observe humans for a while just so that they can figure out what they're like. So they take residence in a female office worker's apartment and essentially are mooching off of her so that they can observe. But of course, it's just these four cute adorable dragons all with different personality types and it's just cute. Mena, Gusuka, Aniki, and Sugar are the names of the four dragons and they're all taking a secret base in this chick's apartment while they continue to plan their attacks on the humans. It's cute, it's heartwarming, I like it, so if you don't like it then get out. I talked about this one not terribly long ago, the Tokyo Mew Mew counter is over. For the 20th anniversary of the series, there was an online counter that was showing a countdown to a certain day of which they were going to make a major announcement for Tokyo Mew Mew. If you're not familiar, Tokyo Mew Mew is this cute sort of pop idol slash magical girl, I guess, but they have a new series coming out, looks super cute, and it would seem that it's going to be its own whole new anime. It's called Tokyo Mew Mew New and it will be debuting this year from what I can understand. Additionally, they were doing a contest where they were holding auditions to women of ages of elementary school up to 30 years old. The winner would receive a major contract with a major label in Japan, and additionally would voice the actual protagonist of the new series. So that's quite a prize. And to think a child in school could win it is just mind boggling. Just goes to show you how much better Japanese voice actors are. Subs over dubs, people. A man in Japan identifying himself as Inosuke Hashibara from Kimetsu no Yaiba, you know, the boar-headed guy, actually donated a hundred face masks and even some alcohol disinfectant to a nursing school in Iwate, Japan. It's pretty cool. 
and really heartwarming to think that this guy would just do this out of the kindness of his heart because they asked him like who he was. They tried to inquire about his identity and he said, and I have to read this from the screen, I'm grateful to all doctors every day. Thank you so much. Inosuke Hashibara is how he signed it, which is just funny. Super cute though, and I guess just quirky. Back in 2011, a series called Tiger and Bunny came out and it got pretty popular online. I wound up watching it, and despite not being the biggest fan of heroes and hero culture, I actually really enjoyed it. It was a weird concept where like all these heroes were sort of like sponsored by different companies and they would help them get gear and essentially buy them a lot of their superpower and they would all compete to solve crimes and you know save people in the town and it was almost like a game show where they were playing with the fact that people could very well get hurt, but still it was this weird game show and this guy who was like, I guess past his prime was kind of up against this sort of younger, more handsome new hero and a lot of craziness happens. A really decent series though. It would seem that they're getting a second season. Completely random, out of the blue, 2011 was the first season. That's a long time ago. To think that almost a decade will have passed before, well, no, wait, because there will. It's not coming out till 2022. So literally a decade between the first and second season, that's mind boggling. People get mad when they have to wait a year for a sequel. God, I couldn't imagine waiting that crazily. But yeah, it's apparently going to pick up after the events of the 2014 Tiger and Bunny The Rising movie. So if you're into that, then check it out. And I would definitely recommend checking out the first season of Tiger and Bunny. It was pretty cool. This one's kind of dumb, but it's entertaining. So there was going to be some Godzilla monsters released as magic cards, which is pretty cool, I think. I'm not a big fan of Magic the Gathering. I've never gotten into it, but there's some nice art on the cards. I'll give it that much. And if they have a Godzilla in there, then God, I'm all game. But it would seem that one of the coming cards was going to be Space Godzilla. Space Godzilla is, yes, a thing if you're not aware. He has these giant crystals on his shoulders. He's pretty badass, but he was going to be called Space Godzilla Death Corona. Now, with the current events happening, Magic the Gathering, or I guess Wizards of the Coast, thought that this might be a little too close for comfort for some people and will be pulling the card. Well, not pulling it entirely, but they're going to be renaming it on further prints because the initial print has already made it out the door. They were too late. Who could have known this was going to come along? And the Corona was just part of the Corona beam that Godzilla uses as his attack. So no relation to the virus, but of course now it has to change. So I will recommend to you to pick up this coming booster pack so that you can maybe get a copy or two of it because I am guaranteeing you down the line, these Space Godzilla cards will likely be worth some money. I could be wrong though, I don't know. But a funny thing is I actually looked up the meaning of Corona and there's two interesting meanings here. I'm gonna read them both off the screen. Corona, rare field gaseous envelope of the sun and other stars. The sun's Corona is normally visible only during a total solar eclipse when it is seen as an irregularly shaped pearly glow surrounding the darkened disk of the moon. I think that's probably the likely culprit of why it's death Corona, cause he's got this deathly glow, I guess. That's pretty badass actually. But it also means a part of the body resembling or likened to a crown. These could both be viable for Godzilla because he is the king of monsters after all. Though Space Godzilla is an entirely different entity. It's this weird alien, whatever. It's pretty cool. It sucks that they're having to pull the card. I think it's maybe a little too sensitive, but whatever, what do I know? Okay, this one's a big problem for a lot of people and we are nearing the most interesting story, so let's get this out of the way first. There have been early releases of Final Fantasy VII Remake. A lot of people are mad about this. I know tons of people in the States are because, well, they wanted to play it now, especially if they're stuck home because of Corona Chan. Now, with that said, there is no chance that they will release this early. They've already said like, we can't do it in America. It could mess up a lot of stuff, so on and so forth. So people have been able to get it in, I think Europe and Australia or something like that. And yeah, those people have been playing it, I'm sure a heck of a lot. Now the new game is supposed to come out the 10th and it should still be coming out, I believe in this coming few days. So don't worry, you're gonna get your hands on it. You're just gonna have to wait an extra week from the people that got it early. But I'm gonna point out something here. This isn't even the full game. Square Enix has already said that there will be multiple chapters for Final Fantasy VII's remake. This one's only getting up to the part where they escape Midgar. So honestly, I would just wait for the full game to come out because 
You already know what happens in Final Fantasy VII, but what do I know? I'm one of those people that think it's one of the most overrated games of all time, but I'm gonna go to the next story. <laughs> Cooking Mama. Not the kind of game that you would normally think would wind up in a huge video game conspiracy, but alas, it has. Cooking Mama is a series known for its cute character art and just fun little rhythm game type style of cooking. Lots of satisfying animations where you cook cute little meals and it's all pretty adorable. I never got too into the series myself, but I know that a lot of people loved the games on DS. There have been a lot of things that have happened with this most recent release that was supposed to come out this past week. Now, they pulled the game digitally, so you can't buy it on the eShop as of right now, and there were such limited physical releases of this, especially with stores being closed right now, that there's not terribly many copies out in the wild. And for those who actually did get a copy of it physically, it is fetching pretty damn good prices on eBay, so why not just sell it? Either way, there were a lot of claims going around that this game might be doing some nefarious things with your Nintendo Switch. One such thing is that it uses something called blockchaining. There was this weird write-up in an interview with some online publication or something along those lines. It's completely 404 now, so you can't find it, but I'm sure it's archived somewhere. Either way, in this, it said that this Cooking Mama game would be one of the first games to feature blockchaining. So people were saying like, what the heck? Are they trying to mine Bitcoins with this game? That's really screwed up because there were also claims that the system would not allow you to play the game unless it was online, which actually has been debunked. Additionally, the game apparently kills your battery super hardcore. And with all of that, and the fact that the game's been pulled, the fact that there's currently a legal battle going on between the Japanese owners of the game's IP and the studio publishing it here in America, all kind of pointed to what the heck is going on and what are you guys doing? Because the company that's released this have nothing to do with Cooking Mama. The games that they've released thus far have been, well, let's just call it shovelware. All of these games are not worth playing. They're all junky kind of party games, games that you might buy for children, very small children, I might mind you. And yeah, all of a sudden they got a mainline, like super big Nintendo party. Nintendo party, Nintendo franchise, you know, it's been exclusive to Nintendo, but apparently there's also a PS4 release now. And there's just so much going on and it all points back to being like, what is happening here? The developers have outright denied this up and down saying, look, it's had multiple passes through Nintendo. This is a 2019 release that's coming out now. So we don't know what you're talking about. That's all lies. This is just buzzwords and people just trying to make a cool story or whatever. And for the most part, I think I believe them. I think it would be really crazy if testers would allow a game to get through that might have some sort of weird background Bitcoin miner in it, which would be really screwy, but worse things have been done, I'm sure. Still, it's all really crazy, but it seems that the rumors are finally starting to get squashed out because some people have like data mined the game or not data mined it, but I guess ripped the game apart and went through the code. And apparently there's parts of the code that might be like missing or something. So it's still kind of suspicious, but yeah, apparently the American publishers have released the game without full permission from the Japanese IP holders, which is why the game is currently in a weird toss up where it shouldn't be out, but it kind of is. And yet they're trying to work that out. I don't know what's going on with that. I think it's really crazy. And uh, it was just entertaining as heck to read. But yeah, basically all those rumors were squashed out. They've said now that you can play the game without connecting. You can play the game with a formatted switch. You can play the game pretty much however you wanna play it. There's no restrictions on being able to play it because of your profile or anything like that or online connectivity. The system does drain battery a bit because of the game. I'm not quite sure what the full reason is behind that, but it could just be poor programming. I don't know. Either way, uh, it's crazy to think that this is going on right now, especially in the midst of all this. But the Cooking Mama Twitter is like, oh, don't worry, we're the world's upside down right now, but the game will come out soon enough. And that's it, guys. That was a mouthful. I talked for way too long. This video is going to take me forever to edit. So let's just wrap things up here and say, I need you to pray. Not pray, but give me your energy. I need it. I need you to reach out and say, uh, here's my energy, Kingu, because I swear, if Thick Cop does not come out this month, I am going to kill someone. Okay, no, I'm not gonna kill somebody. I will fly to Japan and go to Amiami headquarters and say, give me my damn figure, or give me a prototype or something. Come on, Diabody, stop screwing with my mind here. You're playing with my heart. Thanks for watching. I love you guys. I'm gonna link videos right here. Click them if you want, whatever. Come back, subscribe, do all that cool stuff. Like the video? I don't know. This shirt has a little hotto on it, so that's pretty cool. 
See you guys.